Why is India's population so big? If you live in India or have traveled to India before, oh heck, maybe you've just seen images of India on the news or the TV. You would be forgiven if you scratched your head and said to yourself, why are there so many people that live there? The streets are always packed. There seems to be no social distancing to speak of, and trains are packed with people riding the rooftops. And we're not just talking one or two people here. If you saw just one person riding on top of an average American train, you'd probably pull out your phone and call the police. In fact, India has over 16% of the world's population, yet only 2.4% of the world's land mass. The world has 196 countries, yet 36% of the world's population lives in either China or India. Well, if you asked most people who know a thing or two about India, they would probably tell you that India's population is so huge because of things like poverty or other social and economic issues. Well, there are multiple reasons, and we'll get to that shortly, but there's actually more to the story, and it starts thousands of years ago, long before modern-day social and economic issues. After humanity initially spread from Africa thousands of years ago, humans had to find places to live where they could produce food. Earth has not always been a hospitable place, and back then, many people born all over the world barely made it to childbearing age thanks to the various diseases and plagues in Europe. For example, there was the Black Plague in 1347 that spread from Italy and went from east to west. It was so devastating at the time that whole towns were wiped out. From 1629 to 1631, there was the Italian Plague, which killed about 280,000 people, a huge number for that time. During the 16th and 17th centuries, there was the Great Plague of London, which killed about 100,000 people. It was so bad in the mid-1600s, it was killing around 8,000 people per day, and King George ran to the countryside as fast as his legs could carry him, just to get away from it. Around the same time, there was the Great Plague of Marseille, which, as the name suggests, originated in the French port city of Marseille, which killed around 100,000 people as well. Asia, and specifically India, did face plagues and disease as well, but in comparison to Europe, they came out relatively unscathed. They were also very hospitable places for things like agriculture, hunting and gathering, and just general subsistence, in large part thanks to the massive rivers of the Indian subcontinent. Also, rice, as we all know, is heavily produced in India. And let's just say that rice farming is not exactly an easy business. So what does this mean? It meant that larger families were necessary to produce one of India's main sources of food. As it turns out, India's climate was way more hospitable back in those days. Many places on Earth were just simply uninhabitable. Can you imagine people back then wearing parkas and trying to grow food? It just wasn't possible. Also, India's location in the world was optimal. The large rivers and huge plains created the perfect environment for agriculture and population growth. Other places in the world were dominated by mountain ranges, deserts, tropical forests, and snow. Not exactly the best places to grow anything, even today. As the 1800s rolled around, the global population rose to 1 billion for the first time in recorded history. At the same time, modern medicine was born. That meant that there were better treatments for disease and better doctors and nurses. Agriculture was revolutionized at the same time, and all of this led to people living longer and longer, well past child-rearing age. These events didn't just happen in India. They happened all around the world. So why then did this contribute to India having such a massive population relative to the rest of the countries of the world? Because India already had such a big population to start off with. So as the rest of the world's population grew exponentially, so did India's. The India of today is still seeing a dramatic increase in its population, but for different reasons. Today, many girls get married really young mostly for religious reasons. This means that people don't spend years in university before they marry and start a family. 
Married couples in India often start families at a much younger age than many other countries of the world. If we look at fertility rates, women back in the 1950s were having an average of 5.9 babies per woman, which was more like other countries. Fast forward to 2011, it had fallen to 2.5, and the gap between India and the rest of the world had narrowed. But India still had, and continues to have, higher birth rates. If we look at 2011 in the US and the UK, fertility rates were approximately 1.7 and remain relatively unchanged today. Moreover, there are high rates of illiteracy and a lack of family planning. There has also been a widening gap in birth rates and death rates. In 1900, India had a population of approximately 238 million people. By 1950, it had grown to 361 million, and by 2001, it had reached a whopping 1 billion people. To give you some perspective, the population of the United Kingdom today is just over 66 million. The population of Germany is 83 million, and the population of the United States is 328 million. And remember, those are today's numbers, not the numbers of 2001. In today's India, the population is a staggering 1.36 billion. Producing more children by the poor people illustrates the paradox of population poverty interrelationship. Poverty is both the cause and effect of the population growth. Having produced many children for sons to combat one's family's growing needs, some parents are forced to keep them out of school to supplement their household income. In turn, some children will inherit their father's option to have as many sons as are needed to work for sustenance. India is now trying to limit its population growth by imposing a two-child per state. In order to help incentivize its citizens, the Population Control Bill of 2019 passed into law various educational benefits, as well as tax breaks, free healthcare, loan guarantees, and better employment opportunities. Nevertheless, India is expected to take over from China as the biggest country in the world by 2024. So ancient historical factors and modern-day factors both contribute to India's enormous population, and despite the government's efforts, this growth continues, though it's beginning to slow.